The man we speak to today needs no introduction. Under his stewardship, he grew the YTL Group from a single entity in 1985 to a conglomerate spanning five listed companies and business interests in Asia and Europe. His name is Dan Sri Francis Yeo, and he's the CEO of YTL Group of Companies. Dan Sri, a very warm welcome to you. Let's kick it off with, yes, your new 4G network, which you seem to be betting the house on. Let's kick, kick, let's kick off with an update on coverage and uh, how, how the, uh, the, uh, the coverage plan is going. Well, we, uh, the population coverage, we, uh, we have now covered 65 percent and uh, we, we hope to, to cover by 80 percent at the end of this year. How is that plan going? Very well, very well. Very well indeed. Uh, first and foremost, about 100,000 people are on our, our 4G network enjoying and uh, surfing the net, doing YouTubes. For example, they saw the tsunami ahead of CNN. Uh, when it happened through even our bus phone and uh, this time around because the internet community Facebook and uh, uh, all those uh, uh, tweeters community got wind of, of the tsunami very quick and put it on the YouTube's downloaded and a, a lot of people saw it and created a phenomenon in our food court in uh, KL with a small little bus phone and about 100 people looking at a small screen because suddenly they can see a tsunami in the mobile way which is amazing yeah, certainly the uh, the tech community seems to be quite uh, all uh, all a buzz about uh, over the, uh, the the yes 4G service. Um, the thing is, right now you you have a certain promise to 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 cover the population in West Malaysia. But what yeah. about East Malaysia? What about plans to go there? East Malaysia, meaning uh, Sabah, Sarawak, we don't have a, a, a license to go there yet, but we will apply. Uh, are there any plan? Are there any timeline details that you can share with us? I think we'll cover Peninsular Malaysia first, which I think. Uh, mobile internet has arrived. Peninsula Malaysia has a lot of people also on the east coast of Malaysia. I hope they will get get uh, this powerful 4G network that will really enhance the way they educate themselves, the way they work, the way they entertain themselves. Uh, you have to taste it. I think it's very difficult to describe the 4G network. I'm addicted to it, and 100,000 people have surfed and enjoying it. Ask them whether they can get out of a 4G network. It's almost like we watch color TV. It's very difficult to switch back to black and white. Okay, well, I guess part of the, the appeal about the 4G network is the, the download speeds. Yeah? How, what, what kind of speeds can people enjoy? Well, it's all uh, well advertised to the bloggers and all that. You, you just got to take a swipe at any blogger. Recently, a blogger took a measurement on the way from KL to Penang, and uh, he wrote all of that, and he, he gave evidence of that. So you would see, uh, we are actually wanting transparency to tell people our speed. Or else if you see the ecosystem of the 3G world globally, even in Singapore recently, the government has asked the, the 3G telcos to reveal their speeds uh, because many people complain that they are too much throttling and they are, they are, they are not uh, uh, revealing uh, speed. And, and the Ofcom in Britain just forced everyone to sign a code of uh, uh, ethics to de reveal their speed because of these various complaints. While people are trying to hide their speeds, we are trying to advertise our speeds. That's the difference. We ask every blogger, we, is in our flagship store, go and check our speeds. And anywhere you go, write about it. So I think this is best told when people actually use it, right? best rather than the, me trying to to, to, to assure you, I think ask the people who use it. Well, at the time we spoke to Wayne K. Lee last year um, from your from the WiMAX division. He heads up uh, the unit there. She talked about how five times the uh, three G speeds were possible. At so least, I, I think for how. many people it's at least five times, sometimes ten times, depending on, on on what you use. Okay, well let's go back to the investment part of the equation, Dr. Uh You are supposed to roll out um, the whole network with about two and a half billion ringgit of, mm. of, of investment. Mm. Uh, right now, you've spent about one and a half billion of, of ringgit. Yeah, yeah, in terms of rolling it out, uh, is this is this target still on track to spend two and a half? Or Definitely. Or, yeah. We are not looking back, and uh, the exponential growth of our uh, people who have enjoyed the network and those who have heard about it is growing. Our bus phone is. It's flying off the shelves now. I think people begin to understand my joke, you know. Uh, people put uh, two, three hundred ringgit on a phone and a tax service. Let's remind ourselves, the hyper tax, that's 15 years ago. They're still taxing in a boring black and white way. People have gone to multimedia like you know. The whole world's gone to multimedia way to communicate. 
Yet in this country, we are talking about tax and, and phones. And phones at 15 cents a minute is extremely expensive. So I think mobile internet has arrived. If you are going to throw 300 ringgit a month for phone and tax, why don't you give us 150 ringgit? You can do 10,000 emails, you can surf the net, you can go on YouTube, you can call as well. Uh, free so many 450 ringgit on our mobile uh, internet network. So I think I want people to wake up to use the power of the 4G that's arrived. Our 4G network can make Steve Jobs FaceTime come true, conference call. That takes 3 megabytes per second. And that is what I'm trying to wake our country up. This is blessed country that has got a 4G network that can make FaceTime work in the world. Okay, you talked about uh, 100,000 subscribers on your roll now. Um, that's about three mm. months worth of roll mm. rollout time country. Uh, what are internal targets for, for subscribers? Obviously, you come out in a very competitive time in the landscape. Well, you see, uh, like I'm saying, if you think mobile phones are important and you will leave 200, 300 ringgit and think nothing of it, either you're a businessman or, or whatever, and everybody does that, maybe you're worried about a call, uh, from a hospital or relatives or police or emergency, why would you pay 300 ringgit or so to do something more powerful? So I think every mobile phone person must understand at least, give the 4G a shot and learn about it. And for 300 ringgit, maybe you can do so much awesomely more. And then it's urgent. Then they will realize they'll stop just listening to just one ringing tone, which is the phone. They have to ring and respond to five find sort of tones, like uh, app, WhatsApp tones, uh, email tones, and that's just as urgent. It's just that uh, there's no uh, power in the network before to wake up all these apps like what Steve Jobs wants. Now with our 4G network, every video and the f uh, accompanied by voice can be uh, passed through the network uh, for 4 megabytes or 5 megabytes easily. And it takes seconds and that's it, you're, you're away with it. So I think that's very important for people to understand that 4G can wake applications up in a very multimedia way. No, you're right, that's right. And there's two things why people would want to migrate to your platform, which is A, speed, and B, coverage, which is, uh, I mean, I guess it's counted as the, the nationwide service. Um, given that's the case, and given how, how fast you say that, yes, our platform is, can you commit to a subscriber target by the end of 2011 and then beyond, in fact? No, I think I need help from everybody. I think I, uh, to a radio station, to, to everybody. I, I think the best is to test it, give it a go, and, and understand that if you're going to put money down on urgency for phone and text, why don't you do it for mobile internet? For, for the same amount of money, you can do awesomely more. Why don't everybody try that? And then I, I, I think the subscriber number will take care of itself. What if internally, and I'm sure internally you do have your subscriber targets, what if internally you don't meet these targets? Will you, as a conglomerate, as the YTL group, continue to stay committed to this 4G internet path? I think there's no such thing as uh, I wouldn't meet that target because I've learned something uh, in all my years. When you provide a very valuable commodity at a very uh, reasonable price, people want it. Be it water, electricity, anything. And I'm used to that. If I do a hutong, uh, where I get all the hawkers of three, four generations and sell it at less than 10 ringgit average per plate, do I worry that a million people will come? No, I don't worry. A million people do come, even on this first year of uh, opening. So when you are sure about what you're offering, all right, but people need at a very reasonable price, you're not worried. This is the internet world where we actually go on what we call a, a abundance system of of, of uh, thinking, where we, we want the average man to gain from the technology, as opposed to a scarcity monopoly where if you've got special monopolies like cigarettes or something, you want to not to give the average man, uh, you want to charge a premium. I think the internet world is very good in that sense, that you can download things free, YouTubes, and you can do Gmail free. I think that's the system I encourage. That's my idea. We like to give everybody using our ability to do technology for the average man and use it for the empowerment of their lives. Of course, Wing Lee also suggested the, uh, his backers, obviously the YTL group is 60% in, in YTL uh, comms. Um, he's talked about how they are committed and you guys are committed to the business. What happens if there's challenges coming to the picture? 
for example, in terms of um, risks to network expansion, what about things like uh, all-out price wars? I, I think at the end of the day, uh, when we spend 2.5 billion, you may be aware or not, that this is one-sixth of the US budget spent on 4G. So this is a very serious commitment to a country. The US, uh, because of their vested interest in the 3G world space, they don't want to go into 4G. So the whole commitment of the 4G, despite Obama's push for broader band and all that, they, they committed some, and we are spending a sixth of the US budget, and that's the US with the, the Steve Jobs of the world, the Googles of the world, where internet was born there, and, and we are spending a sixth of what they spend on the 4G network. So I think I'm very committed. So if I'm that committed, I am sure I will succeed. We are talking to Tan Sri Francis Yeo, the CEO of the YTL Group of Companies. Up next, the importance of the YES uh, 4G platform to the YTL Group of Companies. Okay, okay. that's first break. <coughs> this morning, we speak to Tan Sri Francis Yeo, the CEO of the YTL Group of Companies. Uh, Tan Sri, you, we've talked about how um, two and a half billion ringgit of, of spend in terms of developing the 4G platform, one sixth of the US budget in doing so. Our question to you is this, how important is this, this new business to the, the, to the YTL group? Very. Because this, uh, you may be aware or not aware that I was very involved amongst others, uh, Kenichi Omai, Nordin Sophie and many others. In Mahathir's era, he could agree to not censor the internet and the MSC corridor was born. A culture in Asia is a beacon not to censor the internet. Now you think of North Korea, there are only two channels, on and off. On is long live King Jong Il or off. Asia is not really liking the freedom of the internet. Whereas Malaysia, we have signed a bill of guarantee to not to censor internet. We've moved on from there, if you remember, to spend 100 million, the first company listed on MassDAC, uh, to, to, to foster internet based companies. And what happened? We, uh, Estiva was born, the first internet protocol phone, voice over internet protocol. We made 26 million ringgit out of a 300,000 ringgit investment. I'm just trying to prove how easy it is and how fat it was for the voice market. It was so easy. It was just too rich, the voice market. And to me, I was just uh, making a point that digital voice has come and you, can, you should shift. And by doing that, the price war that you are talking about, we started it. Today's call, IED calls, is now 93% cheaper because of our Estivas and nine other companies that do the similar stuff and the voice of mobile calls have dropped by 50 percent and finally of course this journey of the uh, getting a 4g network this was the independence that we needed a network uh, that we could have that's not based on satellite or anything which is based on a spectrum and we know the incumbents would not want to invest in that there's too much profit in the voice and the tax market at 15 cents a minute. Why would somebody want to write off what they have when the market still wants to pay them billions of revenue and profits? So for me, if the government could be persuaded to give independent people like us, and we commit to spend 2.5 billion, which we do, and that's why we commit one-sixth of the US budget. And we say give the people a chance. And if when I sell 9 cents at 3 megabytes, I think people who don't get it, it is so cheap. Nobody in the world can build a 4G network nationwide, cover the whole North South Highway and all of that within, what, a short period and, 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 uh, and actually uh, worry about things that will it work or will it not work. I think when people, I see the mobile phones, people leaving money on the table, two, three hundred ringgit for, uh, for importance because it's so important. I think they will soon realize mobile internet is so much more important than mobile phones and, and SMS. When they realize that, then they will quickly switch. You know? And for me, 9 cents per 3 megabyte is so, it's almost a selling water at nominal price or electricity. And that's what it is. That's the appeal of the internet, Dantri. You talked about how earlier you were instrumental in formulating the MSC Bill of Guarantees and the fact that the internet would be forever free, but now there are moves by the government to try and introduce the printing and publication site to cover the internet as well. 
should that day ever come, and uh, will happen for a bit if it does, um, what's that going to do to your business model? No, I, I think uh, I'm not the instrumental. I say I'm amongst many people in the ecosystem that champion <coughs> the freedom of the mobile internet. I must say the Prime Minister at the moment, after having lost five states, the previous government, uh, all those Barisan government have lost five states, many of the our, our members of parliament are bloggers now and all that. And that's, that's good for the ecosystem. The internet brought forth a new culture in politics. You have to be very transparent. Now, did uh, our new Prime Minister and his cabinet worry about that and start to censor? I don't think so. I think our Prime Minister is blogging and uh, tweeting, and he's got a fan base of 500,000. I think that's very positive. He's moving forward. He's encouraging 4G network. So why would we worry about that? So do not misread too much about some of the moves. I think the government led by, by our present Prime Minister is quite clear in, in, in supporting the, 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 the internet. Where the group is concerned, White Hill comes and what you're doing mobile broadband appears to be quite a different strategy to your historical strategy of pursuing stable, um, income-driven businesses, whether it's water or power. Um, was there an epiphany involved here, Tantri, when you went into this new business? No, again, again. You see, the human mind can understand what they see clearly. When I do electricity, you see a pipe, uh, a, a, a cable going to your house, and then you understand I do electricity business. When I do water, you see a pipe going into your house, right? And you see, oh, the water is delivered uh, to every three million homes in Essex. But when I do broadband internet, uh, internet, mobile internet, you don't see it, but I have a pipe next to your ear, next to you, but it's not in your house, it's everywhere. I have, I have pipes, virtual pipe that you can just suck through my bandwidth if you have a smartphone just use a huddle right or you can get a bus phone there's a 4g chip built inside or a dongle and and that's it anywhere and everywhere but this pipe is virtual so it's the same utility business that's why we charge this like an utility very inexpensive like utility like water and electricity People begin to understand why we charge it like utility and why we don't have contracts or tie. You pay as you use. It is very inexpensive, but don't waste it. Like water, electricity, even though it is very uh, reasonably priced, do not waste it. Well, unlike with Vesex Water, where you have a, well, you, well, you have an entrenched uh, uh, marketplace there where there's really no or little no co to competition, the, quite, quite the opposite is different where um, YTL4G is concerned. Um, it, it appears to be quite a uh, high-risk gamble, if you like, for one of, for one of the better description. Well, in Wessex, there are ten other, nine other companies that are competition. In fact, we are the best water company because we, we ask the least tariff because of our efficiency, whereas other water companies ask a lot of tariff increases because of their efficiency or whatever. But as far as competition is concerned, I just was asked, uh, uh, by uh, Star recently, what was my market share on mobile internet? And I said 100%, and she thought I was audacious. But then she realized that it's true because there's nobody that covers the country that has mobile internet. When the bloggers start to go to Penang out from their little cocoon of KL, then they suddenly realize, hey, I could not block to just 10,000 or 100,000 people in KL. I could block to the 20 million people in this nation now. My, 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 my ability to to, to have uh, them see my blog has expanded if the mobile internet is, is countrywide. So I think people are going to understand the ecosystem is expanding. They have not got it yet. The, the mobile internet by nature uh, in the city, most people are in the cities, there's a bit of mobility, iPhones are bought by people in the city. And I'm saying, hey, wake up. I have already put a 4G network in the whole country. The pipes are outside you, everywhere. Just suck it in. Use it. Now. Don't wait. You don't have to wait the pipes to come. The pipes are you. You can't see it, but you said, just try it. Just take a huddle and suddenly you're in. Well, outside of the, the, the entire country, outside of Sabah and Sabah, also. Yes. That's right. um, let's stay on the, the profile of White Hill Power, the listed company under mm. which White Hill Comes is placed. Um, the, you've also got a 30% stake in a new uh, oil shale come power generation project in, in Jordan. Again, um, what appears to be quite a front-loaded capital intensive, front-loaded um, capital intensive business. Um, the question is obviously from the analysts and whether uh, these new projects will 
will, re will alter the uh, white tail power risk profile somewhat to make it more uh, risky? We are pretty careful. You will, uh, you will see through time, we are going to announce a few stuff. And we are very careful, especially working in that area. Uh, we have a lot of caveats and uh, auditing of technologies and all that. In this case, we work with an Estonian identity. Well, in Estonia, about 80 odd percent of the electricity is fueled by shale oil. So they obviously know this technology very well. So they are partners going into. Uh, so of course, if we, we if we invest in anything, we will not invest unless it's successful. It, it's, there's a lot of caveats. In every business that we do in utility, when we do power business, we, we have an agreement like those days with Siemens to do operation and maintenance and to teach us to do for seven years and then transfer the technology to us and, and we will own 100%. Same as our ARL train. Everything time we undertake something, they must put behind their name. And if it doesn't work, we don't pay. We have been very careful in technologies and because of this, <coughs> this due diligence and, and technology audit, we always have less problems because we will make sure it must work first and their name is behind it. If they don't work, we don't pay them. And basically that is, the risk is mitigated in that way. That being said, the uh, capital intensive nature of these businesses um, uh, are said to potentially hurt the YTL power dividend policy going forward. I mean, in the, in the latest quarterly results, um, you announced half what, uh, what you announced last year. So um, is this a valid concern? Uh, the dividend, you mean? Yes. Well, the dividend is uh, is uh, now it's it's a long uh, story, but basically, I think uh, there's a big uh, restructuring in White Tail Corp. White Tail Corp has split the shares, and White Tail Corp would uh, own hopefully one day 100 percent of White Tail Power because of the dividend is so good. So meanwhile, we do not mind them preserving some cash for themselves and reinvest. Right, so in a short while, uh, when we own more of YTL power, maybe the dividend uh, flow will, 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 will be more again. So I think that's a quite a long-term strategy. Uh, we, we think YTL power can preserve their cash now and invest in something substantial. It looks like the environment uh, in the world will provide at last opportunities. Of course, they refer to the 5 into 1 share split, or the share split for, that's for YTL, YTL Corp. Yeah, YTL Corp. So our question is, are you taking white tail power private? Depends, because uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we are preparing white tail power and many of the subsidiary of white tail today uh, for big growth push. Since 2008, there has not been many serious deals. Now, white tail has been able to pick up many good deals in every economic cycle when there's economic implosion, except this mega implosion. So you must ask, why is that, that there's no serious deals? Well, because governments and banks, have, they're not marked to market, right? Properties or any asset. Because that will then spiral into another round of quantitative easing. So they've been holding values at not realistic economic levels. So by I think with all the problems in the world, as you can see inflation, because of the of this kind of, of treatment, the economic environment has caused inflation to come to our doorsteps in every country, and it's very hard to prevent inflation from 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 exponentially growing. So then the options now are at heavy rate to raise interest rates, and they are running out of options, and that's why I think finally the governments, even if they want to keep properties up or assets prices up, I don't think they can. And probably then there will be real opportunities of the real economies where they, we pick up really good assets at the right price. Which is a long, I guess, way of answering our question, which is uh, whether you have to your power private. And the thing is, um, borrowing costs where they are uh, nowadays, it just seems prohibitive to do it in the, in the, under a listed entity. So would that be a yes or maybe or no? That's not a, a, a maybe at all. In fact, one day I've always said uh, there will be only one white tail cop, like one GE or one Siemens. The listing of all the power and all the things was in, in tandem with Malaysia's innovation, which we had a say in the capital market. We could list white tail power in history five years ahead of schedule. We invented the IPC listing category, remember? So yes, in the history, that was the more efficient way to list your subsidiaries. But when your subsidiaries are now maturing and earning a lot of money and dividends, 
Definitely, it's common sense. Uh, they will pay dividends to Cobb. Cobb will use this money and the cash like Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway to buy companies. Or they can buy their own subsidiaries, uh, you know, etc. If the money put to work uh, is better but by buying outside companies, we will. But if, if the money by buying our own companies and paying a high dividend, we will also do that. That's common sense. And we've done that. Uh, if you notice, those who care to analyze a bit deeper than the surface, well, I understand we have already done that. We have already privatized uh, slowly companies like White Girl Cement with the uh, ICALs uh, that converts. And uh, the 10th year, you get a substantial discount and a higher interest rate. That has been a long term plan to privatize COP to own more of their subsidies because I believe they are very valuable. Right? That has always been the case. And of course, the COP shareholders suffer a little bit in the process. Uh, because they don't get very high dividends and they are helping the subsidiaries. But right now, it's time that the COP shareholders are rewarded. And the subsidiaries know that. And uh, I'm also the CEO of all the subsidiaries. I think it's time to pay back the COP shareholders who has been very loyal and faithful. We are talking to Tan Sri Francis Yo, the chief executive of the White Hill Group of Companies. Up next, with a deeper discussion, in fact, on the White Hill uh, subsidiaries. <coughs> okay, so let's okay. to uh, uh, Let's read it. Another 10 15 minutes. 10 15 minutes. Mm. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> White Tail Corp actually long time suffer. Yeah. Oh. But because oh. the family, uh, we are not here. We, yeah. we, we, don't, um, we, we, we don't really mind. Yeah. Because we are the most biggest shareholder, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's fine. But now I think it's time to be fair to the Corp. Okay. okay, shall we, shall we kick off again? Yeah. Alright, okay. This morning on the Breakfast Grill, we are speaking with Dan Sri Francis Yo, the Chief Executive of the White Hill Group of Companies. Um, on to your more stable businesses, in fact, uh, the White Hill Power Group, actually, uh, Dan Sri. Uh, you've got about 8B of cash in, uh, in your coffers. Any plans to expand your power generation capabilities? Yeah, the whole White Hill Group has got about 12 billion worth of cash. 8 billion is through the power. Yes, I like I say, I think no matter what the government's trying to do, uh, economic uh, planners, it's very difficult. You can see the manifestation of the inflation through a combination of uh, three, three uh, phenomena. One is the mobility of the internet. Second is uh, the Chinese government uh, being the consumer of commodities, huge consumers. And the third phenomenon being quantitative easing by Europe and America that brought forth huge inflationary pressures globally. And you can see the internet is not liking, uh, it's showing you that they don't like uh, Mubarak's of the world already. They, because their stomachs are hungry. I think it's not only their stomachs, they are worried about their children. You know? The anger comes when they can't feed their children. And that's what governments are beginning to realize, that the inflation is causing uh, hungry stomachs. And that's why people have no choice but to go on the streets. So it's pretty dangerous. So what's reflected politically will be reflected economically. If Governments do not take actions. So I think this country, our government, at least through Idris Jalla and the Prime Minister, has openly told us we can't subsidize the way we go, right? We, we, we will do very badly like any of these European countries like Portugal or Spain or Ireland if we are not careful and continue to, to, to go the way we go, subsidizing all these fields, etc. So I think that's very positive. At least our government's aware. He, he, he publicly uh, took a lot of flag when he said. We might go bust if you are not careful by, in 10 years time, you are not careful taking this attitude, deficit financing. So I think this is one of the most transparent governments ahead of its time. And I think once we dealt with that, the, the country said, okay, if you speak the truth, I think we'll adjust and we'll see what we can do. Where the power, de power generation business is concerned, you've got about 3,100 megawatts in Paul Soraya out of Singapore, you've got about 1,200 megawatts in Malaysia and an effective 35% in uh, Bihi Java out of uh, Indonesia's 1200 megawatt power station. Is that enough, Tantri, or are you on the lookout for some more? Well, uh, uh, in the power business, again, is a regulated business. We do very well in, in countries that uh, have got trans transparent regulatory framework, like Singapore, Britain, Australia. Uh, you forgot we have Electron and the whole of South Australia transmission grid. Uh, we are running that. So. In countries where there's a transparent regulatory framework, we do very well. Like, but I say, unfortunately, there is no real valuation. 
uh, or no real impulsion despite the economic problem, the values of the assets are not reflecting its real value. So I think we can't uh, purchase that until the market reflects it. Understandably. Um, um, the other portion of the power generation business is the move by the country towards renewable energy. Uh, mm -hmm. The majority, in fact, all yeah. your plants are oil, coal, or gas fired, and or gas fired. Uh, our question to you, Dutchie, is whether these, these sources can ever be truly replaced by uh, RE sources. Slowly, slowly but surely. Uh, the first thing we do, of course, is uh, we pioneered the use of uh, gas in this country. Our, our country, once upon a time, was flaring the gas on the East Coast. So at that time, I told the Prime Minister, why don't you use this, uh, this is quite a clean fuel uh, to, 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 for power instead of coal and all that stuff. So he very quickly took that on and then changed the policy to make gas use the clean fuel. So he did quite well in that the whole country has at least clean fuel. But the problem with that is that the efficiency is only 30 odd percent. Today in Singapore, Sarai have invested in a 54 percent efficiency. So we use uh, much less gas for the same amount of uh, power that you produce. And that's a good trend. So that's one way of mitigating the use of clean. Even though it's clean, you make it more efficient. The renewable, uh, using uh, other sources and all that has become more and more uh, a reality. But governments uh, who are like Spain, who are subsidizing some of these solar technologies and all that, suddenly when they are in trouble in Europe, and they just kind of like cut off the subsidies. And they can't stay on the trend. Um, yeah, as you yeah. say, in Paul Soraya, 54%, this is not bad. Would you stay on the efficiency path on existing um, fossil fuel sources, or would you invest more into Our energy, energy team sources? is combing everything, the f more efficient fuels, including shale gas, shale oil, things that are much more efficient, that does not destroy the environment we are exploring. For example, in America, shale gas has brought down the price of gas by 50%. And shale gas is present in the geographical, uh, geological uh, uh, contours of most countries. So Obama is giving China and India free technology for shale gas, for example. So then you don't need to transport LNG and stuff like that. So there's a big change because it's happened in America uh, that the prices of gas has dropped by 50%. The world will learn from this and uh, Europe and all that. And hopefully by using shale gas, as long as it doesn't destroy the environment, uh, this will be another step in the right direction. Well, speaking of uh, about global fear, Tanshi, uh, you must have seen what's happening in Japan, the fallout from the nuclear power plant, and also Malaysia has got plans to move into that direction. What's your view on this issue? I am uh, quite unequivocal on this. I, I, I don't like nuclear power stations, plainly because the waste, somebody somewhere in the world have to be dumped by the waste, and nobody has actually scream loud enough to answer where is the waste, the nuclear waste going and how do you actually safely keep them. I don't want any people in the world to suffer uh, a toxic waste like that for any country in any population. Well, nonetheless, the government has uh, underlined plans to continue along this path. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I will not participate as a company in nuclear uh, energy. Let's move the, the discussion along to the property side of the business. Uh, YTL Land is a 61% owned subsidiary of COP. Um, and it looks like a lot of effort went into making YTL land much more exciting recently. Oh, yes. yeah. what's, what's the thinking behind this, this move, Tachi? Again, because COP has been, again, uh, looking after their baby YTL land for a while. When we inherited uh, Taiping Con, the new YTL land development, it, it had a whole of 400 million loss. Now we have made 300 million profit back, so we are on the verge of paying dividends now. You have to wipe out all the loss despite all the profits before you can make uh, pay dividends. So I think good news for YTL land uh, shareholders who have been with us for a while, they will suddenly get dividends. But we are globally putting all our properties in Niseko, in, the, in Singapore together. So we become a global land company. We are pretty good at this stuff. And uh, you can see in Singapore, we sold homes at 10 million US apiece. We sold uh, 31 homes at more than 10 million US dollars. So our team are very good at selling homes at, uh, at very good values, globally. So we are using this team now, there will be a new CEO who ran our Singapore uh, team, so 
she will come on board and uh, she will lead uh, White Hill Land and take it into another level. Okay, yeah, you talked about company. how the uh, White Hill Land might not pay dividends. Is there a policy in place going forward? Well, we have every subsidiary of White Hill pays dividends except land because we can't, technically. So now you've turned the corner, is there going to be a policy in place? Yes, of course, uh, when the when we can pay dividends and make positive profit of all the accumulated losses, yes, we will pay dividends. Okay, and MRT is supposed to be now the magic number, the magic word being bandied about. White Hill Land said to be one of the biggest beneficiaries. You've got land in Central, uh, um, uh, KLCC, Bukit Bintang, KL Central. Yeah, I think Central area, uh, we also uh, uh, worked with City Hall and Finance, uh, Mamero Highway, if you remember, uh, to, to, to facilitate the people in Central to come to work. And there's already two stations on the, on the train stations that go to the KL Central station. And uh, now with the MRT, is better. So I think Sentul is a huge population. What we've done to Sentul, which was once touted as a criminal, uh, a terrible, uh, ghetto-ish area, is now a very sought after uh, hippie, almost like um, uh, New York's uh, uh, hip, hip district. You know what you call that? Soho. Yeah. Yeah. And the turn, if we turn around, there are many cool people staying there now. The environment, we made it very green and the architecture, uh, iconic architecture, you look at the capers. Global architecture, bringing global architecture to make that place really fun to live in and good to live in. What's the big picture for White Hill Land Country? Well, I it will be a very significant global land company and they will do very well in, in its turnover and its profits. I am confident of the management. Okay, you've got stuff in Singapore, you've got stuff in Malaysia, even Niseko and, and various hotels yes, around yeah. the world. Um, Spend a bit of time, actually, we'll ask, uh, touch you a couple minutes on your views on the property cycle in this part of the world. Yeah. Are we at or near or at the beginning of this huge property super cycle that everyone seems to talk about? No, we are, if you look at it economically, we shouldn't be suffering uh, languishing in our property prices today. As a capital, as a quite a vibrant capital in Asia, especially with with a 4G network, with communication second to none in the world, I think we should market ourselves a bit better. We shouldn't be serving a 600% discount against prime to prime properties in Singapore, for example. Well, they don't have, uh, they have a land scarcity issue, whereas Malaysia does not. No, and I'm talking about the city of Kuala Lumpur. I'm, I'm talking about the city of Kuala Lumpur. If you talk about Kuala Lumpur, also there's scarcity of land. City to city, why are we languishing? Well, it's very simple. We, it's definitely not due to material or land. Uh, it's the premium people pay for land or a, a finished product in any capital. It has no rhyme or reason that uh, Jakarta is more expensive than Kuala Lumpur. Why are we suffering from this? So you can see the phenomenon of inflation. You can see Hong Kong, Shanghai, Singapore is curbing their property prices. Malaysia, we can't even get it to move, the property price. So you can see we are out of sync, right? And With a trend of it's been out, property. It's been out of sync for years, don't you? You talked about this in the past. Yeah, I, I think a fast train from KL to Singapore will put an end to this languishing. That's one Gordian knot solution. And uh, that's one of them. Because we see the Paris-London uh, train brought the Paris property up in four years to be equal to that of London's. So I think simple solution, and this government is up to the mark to do something uh, clever like on, this. On exactly that private, uh, public five uh, initiative, uh, Dr. where does the White Hill group stand in that particular project, the high speed train, train between here, Singapore and Penang? Uh, as a landowner of KL, I like to see the train project. Like I say, it must be transparently done by anybody. White Hill can do it, other people can do it, but you transparently know, done so that first, uh, I like one concept. The train will take 10 million cars off the road for carbon emission. So and I like number one. Whoever does it, 10 million cars of fumes are off, off at least the passengers traveling on that. I first like that concept. Secondly, I, I like the property. The prices will, like Paris and London, will move up to that. And do you realize the significance of that? If we increase property prices by 200 ringgit a square foot in the Klang Valley, Klang Valley folks will be enriched by 500 billion. That's a lot of enrichment by just doing a train. Right? 
whether it's a YTL group or in any other consortium that, that, that does this project, Dutri, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most likely, in fact, the certainty, how would you rate the possibility of this high-speed rail link occurring? Very high because the government wants this. I heard them announce they're doing studying, just like the MRT. If they want it, then do it transparently. The public will go for it. Will this be done under COP? If you're involved, will this be done under COP? Well, this is a COP project really, because COP owns... It's a COP. COP uh, owns the ERL that runs from the airport to, uh, in the city. And uh, people are very cynical about their project once. But 30 million people have sat on it at 35 ringgit, cheaper than a taxi. That's my point about giving utilities, be it transport, water, electricity, or internet to the people at the right price. People will come. People will come if you do give technology at the right price. Country, you are the proud father of five children. Um, and in times of passing on business wisdom or, or, or life lessons to your children, where do connections fall on that list? Connections? In connections. Home. In what? In political in life, connections? In, in life? Uh, what are all kinds of connections? Yeah, I, I think they have to have a very strong connection to my Lord Jesus Christ. That is the connection of connections. The rest uh, will take care of itself. Well, tell us more. And that's it. Yeah, once they have that, everything else will fall into <coughs> place. Well, the report suggests that at 16 years old, you had, uh, you had a very serious problem on your hands. Mm -hmm. You had a bit of an epiphany, and uh, it's, it seemed insurmountable at the time. Um, and that's when you converted from Buddhism, yeah. yes, to yeah. Christianity? Yes. Uh, at that time I had a problem, so I said, whichever God that solved my problem within the weekend, that God is powerful. It happened to be a church, so if I walk into another Hindu temple, probably I'll be a Hindu. But because it was so powerful, I could not uh, get it out of my heart and my head and my system. So I've since been, uh, and I've seen the glory of God and His ways. This is. This is an awesome God that is very real, that, that gives you a perspective, not only width but depth, that gives a meaning to your life. You, and, and also when you suffer, like I, I, my wife's in heaven now, I can deal with it. And I love my wife so much that uh, it's like a body, literally a part of your body torn from you. Very few people can survive that kind of uh, 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 tear unless you have God in you. So the fact that my soul is well, is well my soul, and I'm doing well, shows that uh, my Lord Jesus Christ must exist. Patrick, a real honor and a real pleasure to speak with you. Great insights on life, on business and politics. Thank you for your time. That was YTL Corp Chief Executive, Tan Sri Francisio. I'm Kusu Zhuang, BFM 89.9.